But our Doug Richards was out with the Kasim Reed campaign earlier. It's kind of cleared out over there, Doug, but what can you tell us from their camp? It is uh, definitely a much thinner crowd than it was here about an hour, hour and a half ago. This is a cavernous room, and uh, there's about 30 people in here at this point. The funny thing is, though, the DJ is still playing very loud music. And when Kasim Reed was here about 45 minutes ago, he told these folks that he would come back tonight. Um, so when he spoke to them earlier, he made a speech that was neither uh, a victory speech nor a concession speech. It was a speech of a man who was very circumspect about numbers that he was clearly disappointed in and hoped that he would not see at this point uh, or at that point in the evening when he spoke. So. Um, that, you know, we, we have heard scenarios from supporters here about how Kasim Reed was going to pull it off, but that was when Kasim Reed had a lead. And uh, now that he does not have a lead, um, now they're talking about recounts, um, which they, if they, if they fall within a certain percentage point, I think it's 0.5 percent, they're entitled to ask for and get for free uh, without paying for it. But at the same time, recounts under these circumstances, particularly with the new voting machines where it is, it, where the, the presidential recount was pretty much automatically a validation of the earlier election, there are not high hopes that a recount will solve anything. And then there's, of course, the business of provisional ballots and that sort of thing. Those will all be examined whether you can get to the threshold of the difference that we're looking at now between Dickens and Reed is the question that uh, folks here, the few of them left, uh, are pondering, Jeff. So, so Doug, my question to you is, is twofold. One, uh, are you surprised at these results, seeing that Andre Dickens, at least in our polling from a few weeks ago, was not doing very well, and it appeared the former mayor, Kasim Reed, was doing well, though perhaps not as well as the expectation had been. So are, uh, how, how do you view this? What's your take on this? I mean, I, mean, I, think, I think it was, I think, I mean, I think everybody assumed that Kasim Reed was going to be in the top two. Um, and, you know, when you, when you saw Andre Dickens, you saw a guy who was smart, who has a lot of talent for public service. Um, but who did not seem to catch fire in the course of the campaign. But, you know, at the same time, kind of knowing him, you could see how undecided voters in those circumstances you were talking about, where you actually get to meet him, might have been persuaded that he was the kind of guy who would be an interesting, sort of new, fresh, competent mayor. Um, so, I think the Kasim Reed question has risen and fallen on his experience during the eight years he was in office and the sort of sloppy way that he got out of office uh, and the unfortunate uh, federal investigation uh, into many of his top aides, an investigation that did not taint him legally, but tainted him politically. And uh, that's what we're looking at right now. Yeah, Doug Richards from Kasim Reed headquarters, and it is mostly deserted at this point. It mm -hmm. is a, uh, a certainly a surprising night, and it's not done yet. I mean, you know, the, there's a 500 vote separation yeah. or, or under that, so things can certainly change, and there can be a recount. But nonetheless, to see the former mayor struggling to get into the two-person runoff is something I don't think many of us anticipated. I would certainly agree with that. Let's take another look at the.